Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. It's Q&A Tuesday. First, we're going to start off with the countdown days. So if you're new to my channel, I am counting down the days to the AHIMA 2019 conference that is being held in beautiful Chicago, Illinois this year, home of the American Health Information Management Association. Pre-conference starts September 14th, and that is 88 days from today. And the um, that Sunday is the official kickoff and the welcoming ceremony when everybody gets in. That is September 15th, and that is 89 days from today. So I am so excited because we are less than 90 days now. So it's going to be here like just like that. So if you're interested uh, in attending this year's conference, I will leave a link in the description box below. Uh, early bird pricing is still going on until July 15th, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in attending this year. One other bit of housekeeping before I go on. So yesterday on uh, Answer, Answer Monday, I did it again. I, I gave the wrong direction <laughs> on one of the procedure codes. So number one, it should have been on the left. And I said in the video, it was on the right. So my bad. And then I said it in the, in the description box, I said right. So, but I've changed it to, to reflect left. And I said, sorry, um, that was, that was wrong. So oops, but I'm glad you guys are paying attention uh, to those detail things because that's very important. Um, I could have played it off and been like, oh yeah, sure. I was waiting to see who was going to, uh, you know, call me out on my error, but no, <laughs> I can't do that to you guys. So I, that was a legitimate mistake on my part, my bad. But uh, like I said, I did correct it on the, um, on the description box below. So, oh, well, moving on. Let's get started on the questions. Number one, do you worry about training your providers to select correct codes that they will not need you? No, I don't worry about that because even though they select the correct codes, they still need a good medical coder to look over the documentation to see if there's anything else that they're missing or to pick up what they didn't pick up. Okay, so these things happen. I mean, Providers are not trained medical coders. That's why they have us, you know, to be able to do this, um, to support them with what they're doing. Um, and it's our job to make sure that everything, all the details are there like they should be. Okay. So no, I don't worry about that. What are some of the resources that you have for studying for the exam? Both uh, association websites have a list of resources that you can, you know, use to practice, you know, your exam. Uh, I recommend, you know, getting an exam prep book for whatever exam that you're going to take. If you have access to any other exam books, um, for example, at the library or maybe somebody else is taking another exam that you know, uh, use their, use their uh, exam books and, and, and test yourself on those exams as well. Even though you're not sitting for that exam, uh, just check it out and see, you know, hey, you know, uh, you're giving yourself like the maximum number of questions that you could possibly um, get, right? And and it never hurts to be very prepared for anything. So make sure you understand your laws. Make sure you understand HIPAA. Make sure you understand all of your symbols and what do they mean and things like that. You know, I mean, there's a, just a myriad of things that you can, you, you know, work on looking at. But those exam prep books are the first good place to start. Uh, making sure that you are up on your medical terminology uh, is, is also really key um, because I've seen uh, where people confuse lead, like a cardiac lead and lead, like lead poisoning. I've seen those get confused. So yeah, be sure that you are looking at the details on those things. Um, and, and like I said, understanding your, your, those medical terminology is, is really key. I mean, you know, of course, of course you don't have to memorize all of the words, but you do at least have to know the breakdown. And so you can, you can be able to figure it out. Okay. Um, uh, that was it on that one. Um, and what else? Yeah, if you are getting ready to take your exam, like like I've said before in, in a previous video, if you are getting ready to take your exam, just relax. And the best thing you can do is have fun with it. When you go in, 
know that this is going to be the start of a new career path for you. This is this is going to be the beginning of something new and exciting. You are you are going to be working with some of the most smartest people that you have ever met in your whole life when you become a medical coder. Okay. So if you are uh, interested in, in becoming a medical coder and, and you're going to these um, trade schools to, to check them out and, and see what it's all about. Uh, when I went to check out these different schools, I went to three different trade schools to check them out. And two out of the three talked to me immediately about money. Now, I would never personally tell anybody about money when it comes to medical coding. Why? Because to me, you, you don't put that in front of people. It is there. I mean, obviously, you can look up what a medical coder makes and it's substantial. But the thing is, that's not the reason that people should be drawn to doing this field. This is a very serious field. This isn't for, oh, well, I want to get into it and make a lot of money. Uh, okay, but how are you going to apply yourself? How are you going to be a very good medical coder? Because if you're not doing your job, if you're not helping your provider, if you're not uh, working with the documentation, or if you're not pushing yourself to learn more, what good is it to have a credential if you can't, you know, grow a good relationship with your providers and make sure that they're getting credit for everything that they're doing? Okay, this is why I say this is a this is a very fulfilling career. But when I went and I had to interview the three schools. Like I said, two of them talked to me about money and one didn't. And that one that didn't was the one that I chose. Why? Because she told me everything about what I needed to know as far as like I needed to understand uh, anatomy and, and medical terminology and physiology and things like that. I needed to understand the disease process. She told me about the different associations, the two different associations at the time she was telling me about those. And then she was telling me what the difference is between being credentialed and having a certificate um, for medical, medical coding, you know, she, she said that there was a difference. Um, obviously I know what the difference is now, you know me, I know what it is. This is why I went for a credential because credentials is what's going to follow you. Um, certificates, that's, that's not, it's something completely different when you are talking about being a medical coder. So this is something that you, if you are in the process of looking for a school or you're in the process of looking into being a medical coder, these are the questions that you need to ask. Is this program going to lead me on a path to getting a credential or is it going to lead me on a path to getting a certificate? There's a big difference between the two. So be sure to ask a lot of questions. And if people are just automatically telling you about the money, that's a red flag because, you know... I mean, there's these schools, these for-profit schools, because they're for-profit. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. You know, they, they want to sell you something, you know. Um, as I said, it's a good career field. <coughs> but you have to be able to apply yourself, too, in order to get maximum fulfillment out of it. Okay? Because there is a lot of growth still in this field, you know. Um, don't worry about those you know, oh, it's going to go offshore and things like that. There's still plenty of hospitals that will not have offshore coders because you have to understand, you have to have technical ability to be able to understand what you're reading. And if you put in a language barrier with that, it's it's not a good thing. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't let that freak you out. Okay. So I'm just saying, um, you know, us medical coders, we work very hard and and we have to have a lot of knowledge, you know, and that knowledge will come eventually over time too. You know, you may feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, but that's okay because we all were there. We all felt that, you know what I mean? Or at least majority of us who, who can admit and be honest about it did feel that way at one point. Um, and sometimes I still feel like that, like, oh my gosh, what the heck am I doing? You know what I mean? But then I, what I do is I, I make sure I educate myself fully Whatever, anything and everything I can get my hands on, I will I will get in order to learn a new clinic. Um, I talked about this previously. I got put in the pulmonary clinic uh, last year in the spring. And I had, I mean, I had done some, some diagnosis coding for, for pulmonary, uh, but I'd never, never fully had been immersed into the pulmonary clinic. And then I was like, okay, well, let me start learning all these things 
let me let me go to these websites and and check out what I need to uh, when it comes to this uh, coding pulmonary. And it was a good thing I did because I learned a lot, you know. And then I read over the section in in the CPT book, and I and I went over, you know, and looked in um, <clears throat> my ICD-10 book and looked up. Um, that whole section of the diagnosis for uh, pulmonary to make sure that I can familiarize myself with those things. So it's all about being proactive too when you are a medical coder um, and understanding that you know you're going to have to do research on your own and you can't use the excuse well no one told me, okay? Because it's it's not an excuse. Um, you have to be able to say well I I'm looking and I'm and I'm verifying and I'm making sure. And if you if you're not sure, then ask somebody. You know, you can submit a question here if you're if you're curious about something you can't find an answer to. That's fine. I will try to help you as much as I can to figure out an answer. You know, um, I've done outpatient uh, coding most of my career and surgery coding. Um, I don't have a lot of experience coding inpatient. Um, so this is this is where I know I need to take a class in that. Because I, that's something that I do want to uh, start studying because that way I can push on to another credential. Um, but until then, I mean, most of my stuff has been outpatient. So, But yes, these are my thoughts and opinions for today on Q&A Tuesday. Um, I, I appreciate everybody's feedback. Thank you guys so much for being so proactive and, and asking lots of questions. Um, I hope you will... You all will uh, continue to watch my videos and, and see if there's anything that you're curious about. If I've already done a video, if I haven't, let me know and um, I will be happy to do a video on it. We are going to be working on uh, injury chatting tomorrow. So get ready for that. I'm excited. I'm always, I always get excited when it comes to uh, injury coding. So um, if you guys have any questions, I will be doing Q&A Tuesday for next week. So you can submit uh, your questions to my email address or you can comment below and I will put them on for the following week. So that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, shoot me an email, let me know. Uh, if you are a medical coder and medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel. Also, I am on Instagram, so medical coding with blue. Very easy to find. <laughs> so I will see y'all on tomorrow's episode, okay? Bye.